Hello Sigmas and welcome back to another video of our video series on mechanics and in this video we are going to look into another example right and as you might have known from the title we are going to look into projectile motion right now before we dive into what projectile motion is I want you to check out this very video <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that funny? Now what we are going to do in this example is analyze the trajectory of that poor guy sitting at the back of the bike. Right. And uh, we are going to begin by drawing our favorite coordinate system, the Cartesian coordinate system. Right. Now, let's say the bike was traveling in the x direction. The bike was traveling in this direction, which is the x direction. Okay. And had a speed vx. And that guy, uh, the bumper was present at the origin. So, that bumper pushed the guy in the upward direction with a speed vy. Now, over here in this example, we are going to apply Newton's first law, which says that in the absence of any external force, a body tends to remain or retain in the same state of motion. Which means that if that guy sitting at the back was sitting on the bike, so he himself was also traveling with speed Vx. And uh, that's why its speed in the horizontal direction, in the x direction, is going to remain vx. Whereas due to the bumper pushing it in the upward direction, it is also going to have a velocity vy in the upward direction. And due to these two velocities, it is going to have a resultant velocity which I shall call v. Now v, let's say it makes an angle theta with the x-axis, then vx is nothing but as you know v cos theta and vy as you would be surprised is equal to v sin theta, right? And the path which the, the guy is going to follow would look something like this. It is a parabolic path. So what we are going to do is uh, we are going to break that guy's motion into the x and the y direction, right? We know that the only force which is acting in this kind of situation is the force of gravity because I told you the bumper or the speed breaker pushed it in the upward direction with a constant velocity v1. So the only force which applies is of gravity and acceleration due to gravity I want to call g in the downwards direction. Now I'm taking the upward as you can see the y-axis point in the upward direction as the positive axis and the right direction of the x-axis as the positive x-axis. Uh, we already know that vx is equal to v cos theta and ax that is acceleration in the x-direction is equal to zero. There is no acceleration in the x-direction because that guy's friend, the culprit responsible for him to uh, fly up into the air is riding with a constant velocity and the bumper pushed him up in the upward direction with a constant velocity v sine theta and the acceleration in that direction as I've told you is only due to gravity so that is minus g because it points in the downward y direction. So we have uh, now analyzing only the uh, that person's uh, velocity or motion in the x direction. So we are going to first look at his uh, motion in the horizontal direction. Horizontal direction. So in the horizontal direction as we have seen uh, the acceleration is zero. So applying our formula in the x direction only, we will get vx, as you know from my videos on kinematics, equal to ux plus axt. Right, but since uh, ax uh, is 0, we get u cos theta. So vx is equal to u cos theta. 
Now, since V represents final velocities, I'm going to replace these Vx with Us because V represents final velocity and here we want to represent initial velocity. So the Us which I previously called Vs were actually initial velocities. So we shall call it U because of uh, traditional notations, right? These are just traditional notations. And we have X because it started at the origin. So X naught is zero. So we will get UXT plus half AT square. So that would be equal to U cos theta T, right? Because AX is equal to zero. This is AX. And next we are going to analyze its motion, that person's motion in the Y direction. So vertical motion. So in the vertical direction, the acceleration is minus V. So we get VY, the final velocity in the vertical direction is equal to UY minus GT. And Y is equal to, again, it started at the origin. So Y naught is zero. UY of T minus half GT squared. Now, if you are still wondering how we can break down a particle's motion in the horizontal and vertical direction, then on this, remember that we can write any vector v as its component in the x direction plus its component in the y direction. So, what we are doing is finding these components separately and then we are going to analyze it as a whole. So that is what we are doing. We are finding Vx and Vy separately and then we are going to add them up vectorially to get the general vector V. And another ex uh, formula which we have, the very famous formula is the Vy square. This would be equal to Uy square minus 2Gy. Right, you already know these formulas from my videos on kinematics. So now, since the biker, this is the bike. Okay. So since this guy who just flew up into the air will reunite with the bike at this position. So it is going to follow this path and they're going to reunite at this position, right? So we, we have to find that position X or we have to find the time in which these two are going to reunite. Right here, right? So we are going to find, let me call this R. So this point, we, I'm calling it R. Uh, you are going to soon find out why I uh, prefer to call it R. But for now, we want to find uh, the time in which these, the bike and the person uh, sitting at the back will reunite, right? So to find that, you have to notice that the Y coordinate of this position is zero. So this is r comma zero so the y coordinate of this position is zero because simply because it lies in the x-axis so the y coordinate is zero so what uh, we are going to get is from here this y is equal to zero so we get u y of t now y is not always zero for that particular coordinate for r comma zero y is zero so i'm applying for that and uh, minus half gt square is equal to zero, right? So we get uyt is equal to half gt square. One t cancels with one t, so I get t is equal to two uy divided by g, which is equal to two. What was uy? Uy was nothing but um u sine theta, right? Conji. Yes, and this, since I'm calling these as u's 
so i have to call this also as u so yeah its component is also u or its resultant vector is also u right yeah so this is what is known as the time of flight so this is known as the time of flight time of flight right this means that simply means that time in which the person was in the air it was in flight right so next we are going to look into the range or we are going to find that r you know that r is known as a range that is its direction in the x direction whatever distance it covered you can see r is nothing but in the x direction whatever distance that person covered right so that is known as the range of that person and how do we find that we know that the time in which the both of them reunited is given by the time of flight which is equal to 2 u sin theta g right and i shall call it capital t time of flight right it's a special t so i call it capital t so in capital t time they both are going to reunite and that is also the time in which the bike has covered the distance r right so applying that time in the x direction we are going to find the range r so in the x direction we already know that uh, r should be equal to right applying a what that is that this right this so in the r direction x is equal to u cos theta into t so x is equal to r for that coordinate where they both meet right so we are going to get r is equal to u cos theta into t what was our time of flight 2 u sin theta divided by g so we are going to get 2 u sin theta divided by g and this is going to give you 2 u square or u square 2 cos theta sin theta divided by g Now, why did I write in this manner? Because here you are going to apply the very famous formula: two cos theta sine theta is equal to two sine of two theta. So we are going to get u square sine of two theta divided by g. Right. So this gives us the range or the x distance after which both of them are going to. And the final thing which we are going to find out in this example is the height. Right. That guy was raised to I don't know how many feet, but we have to find that height up to which that a uh, person was raised to. So since we are analyzing, breaking down this motion. in the x and y direction you have to realize that this is simply in the y direction like this you throw a ball up it is going to go up and then it is going to stop at some point why because of gravity gravity is going to slow that ball down so it will stop at some point and then come back in the other direction right it is going to fall down then you experience this in your daily life this is very simple to understand you throw a ball up it stops in mid air and then falls down so that is what is going to happen in the y direction of that guy right it is going to be raised up to a height h capital h i am calling it and then it is going to fall down right so now we have to find that height h so what we have to find next is the maximum height maximum height reach by that person right and uh, how do we find that so you have to realize that as i told you that at this point the y velocity vy is equal to 0 right and this is exactly what we are going to apply over here so in that equation v by putting v by equal to 0 so we are going to put v by equal to 0 so that we get u y is equal to g t so putting v by equal to 0 in that equation you will simply get u y is equal to g t right and t is what t is equal to u y divided by g 
so this gives us the time in which the body is going to reach at the maximum height right and i want to notice a very interesting thing that is p is equal to ui upon g right and the time of flight is equal to 2 ui upon g that means the body takes half the time in reaching its maximum height and the other half in reaching from its maximum height and reuniting with the bike this is very interesting right so next since we know how much time it takes we are going to simply find h by substituting it in this formula so now y as i told you is not zero anymore but y is equal to h right over the y coordinate of that point the y coordinate of this point is nothing but h comma not zero but h comma something right but basically its y coordinate is h okay so applying that formula since its y coordinate is h this y is nothing but the y coordinate okay the value of y coordinate at that point and same thing with the x axis this right this gives the x coordinate of that point so y coordinate is equal to h so we are going to get h equal to uyt so we are going to get h equal to uyt minus half gt square and we are going to substitute t from here into this equation so what do we get we, are, we will get ui into ui upon g minus half g into ui upon g the whole square now here we are going to get ui squared divided by g minus half g ui squared divided by g squared one of the g's are going to simply get cancelled and so what we get is ui squared divided by g minus half of ui squared divided by g and that is simply half of ui squared divided by g and substituting the value of ui which is equal to u sine theta we are going to get u square sine square theta divided by 2g. Now, if you are solving a problem, you could apply this formula or this formula depending upon what is given to you in the problem. Is it the y component of the velocity which is given or it is the resultant of both the velocities and the angle at which the ball was thrown which is given. So that is it guys, I wanted to here show you the physics behind this very viral and funny video and the we found the trajectory of that guy sitting at the back. Many people ask me where do we apply physics in real life and this is where you do. If you do not know physics, you fall in the trap of such riders and your friends, right? So thank you guys for watching if, to motivate me to make more such uh, interesting videos do subscribe to the channel and do not forget to like this video i will see you in the next one thanks for watching